Hi everyone, my name is Declan McGlynn. Welcome to Friday Forum Live, Point Blank's weekly broadcast bringing you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and industry insight live from East London. Today we're joined by Matt Blank, Matt Black, co-founder of Sampling Pioneers, Cold Cut and Ninja Tune, one of, one of electronic music's most influential labels. Today we're going to be exploring his brand new app, Ninja Jam. So before we dive into that, I just want to quickly update you on what's been going on this week at Point Blank. Our new online school term, term starts this Monday and we've only a couple of spaces left, so make sure you book yours as soon as possible. You can visit online.pointblanklondon.com for more details. It's also the final day of our competition to win a Tractor Control S2 Mark II, a copy of Tractor Pro 2 and a pair of III TMA1 DJ headphones. So make sure you register on our website before midnight tonight to be able to chance of winning that. You can visit plus.pointblanklondon.com for more information. Today we're taking a look at Ninja Jam, an iOS app that allows you to remix tracks directly on your phone or iPad. Last week we asked you guys to send us a bunch of loops and samples and we've loaded them into the app to show you how it works. Remember if you have any questions, add them to the comments and we'll get to them at the end of the broadcast. So Matt, thanks for coming in. Good to be here. Um, so do you want to tell us, first of all, a little bit about how Ninja Jam works? Well, Ninja Jam is a four-track remix app. So I'll assume that most of the people watching have yeah. a vague uh, understanding of electronic music, and music is generally made out of separate tracks, like drums, bass, melodies, vocals, and you can have all these different tracks mixed together to give you your final piece of music. Ninja Jam lets you mess with the individual elements of a track in four stems, typically drums, bass, melody and vocals, and remix them, put effects on, uh, and generally provide your own interpretation of a piece of music. Yeah. So what was the inspiration behind it? I mean, what were you thinking, I want to allow people to do this? It, yeah, it really, it's a, it's a case of um, combining what we like best about DJing and also making music in the studio. People sometimes see these as separate things, but I'm sure at Point Blank you cover mm. both those areas and indeed the intersection between them. And uh, Jonathan Moore, my partner, and I uh, are not really trained musicians, but we like messing around with sound and we like DJing, so we wanted to make tools that would let us have more fun doing this and let other people have a go as well. Yeah, and. It's, it, right now, it's just a case of going online, you download the Ninja Tune um, sound packs that, that you can get in Ninja Jam, is that That's right? right. Okay. The tune packs. Well, when the, the app itself is free, okay. and it comes with one tune pack, which is what we call this format, uh, which is cold cut beats and pieces, an old sort of cut and paste track of ours. Dare I call it a classic? Some people <laughs> do. Um, so that's included with the app. And then there are other tune packs for sale in the kind of in-app store, in-app purchases, which is how uh, Apple uh, apps work. And they're, I think in the UK, they're 69p each, which is less than an MP3 on iTunes. So yeah. it's a fairly good price. I yeah, think. sure. And through that, you get the vocals and some of the stems. That's right. So okay. you're getting access to the actual individual DNA of Ninja Tune tracks. Yeah. Which, which in a way, you know, as much as it's nice to play around with them and affect them and stuff, you also learn about what things sound individually, which can you know, help your ear as a producer as well. That's right, I think yeah. so. And um, you know, artists like Amon Tobin, he made a really nice comment about it actually, which he said, I'm into anything that invites people in, and then if you like it, you can dig deeper. And that's uh, right on point with what we are trying to do with, sure. the, with the app. And it's quite generous and open of an, a really rated artist like Amon to let people get out the microscope and really see how his tracks are, are made up. It's almost like letting you in on the secrets of the yeah, alchemy. Exactly. So is it just for Ninja Tune music? Initially, we've done it for Ninja Tune tracks, but we've also started introducing guest artists who are generally friends of mine on other labels uh, or independent operators, like System 7 with the okay. legendary Steve Hillage, yeah. who's uh, still going from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and noughties as a you know, incredible musician and uh, electronic music producer now. So he gave us a track um, 
and uh, Balkan Beatbox are another friends of ours who've given us tracks. But the vision beyond the guest artists is to really open up the format so that other artists can use the app to put their own music into. Sure. So we see it as kind of a new music format, an interactive music format, and uh, there's no reason why anyone shouldn't be able to get their stuff, get their sound, their material, and make tune packs which can then be used in the app. Yeah, and then you'll be able to use, use the different effects which we'll go into later through the app and sequence things. And yeah, there's, there's yeah. quite a bit you can do in the app which uh, we'll have a look at in a minute. So, as I say, combining tricks from DJ and studio production in an easy to use interface. Mm. So what is it, I mean, you guys have been involved in designing software for a long time. What is it about, the, what is the link between making music and software for you in terms of why does software, making software to manipulate music excite you? Well, that's a really good question, uh, quite a deep question. I mean, really that goes back to my youth when I started getting into messing around with sound mm. and light. And uh, I used to get all my little robots together and wire up some bulbs and buzzers and I had a little reel-to-reel -reel tape machine. So when I was about eight and I charged my family half a penny to, <laughs> you to come in. Family, yeah, yeah like my mum said, it's a, it's a sound and, very good, it's a sound and light show. And so that kind of uh, inspired me really. Uh, in a way, my sister was the one who got the piano lessons and, and I think perhaps I was too lazy or I just didn't quite get it. But I wanted to have a shortcut to making music. Right. And so I looked around for things which could help me, you know, avoid having to put in the hours of, of hard practice, which looked a bit like hard work. Um, in the end, I found out it hasn't saved me any time, but it's sort of given me my own approach to making music and, mm. and, uh, and art. And so it's a case really of using technology to enhance one's creativity. Sure. And I think everyone has the impulse to to play, to play games, to play music, it's the same verb. I think that's, there's a real connection between those two senses of the word play. Yeah. So really that's what it's about. It's about the enjoyment of playing with sound and using whatever tools and toys are around to enhance that, and if they don't exist, making them. Mm. And Coca are pioneers of sampling and the cut and paste kind of methodology. Um, how do you feel now as a label owner when you hear your tracks? sample in other people's music. Well, I love it. As yeah. long as, you know, if they have a hit, we get a, a slice <laughs> yeah. of the pie. And Half since penny, the, right? Well, <laughs> since the, the early days of sampling, when it was kind of the Wild West, um, yeah, exactly, yeah. you know, a framework has evolved for dealing with rights issues. And I think broadly, that's a good thing. You know, hey, sample my stuff, fantastic, mess around with it, play it to your friends. But if you make a record which actually, a tune which actually sells a lot of copies and it's using a chorus from People Hold On, for instance, one of our tracks, obviously we're going to want a piece of that. And that goes the other way as well. You know, if we use big samples of other artists, we clear those nowadays. So I think it's a good, healthy environment mm. nowadays that it, it, not everything leads into a, a legal case which in the past used to only benefit the lawyers more than anything else. There's a framework for doing it. Um, yeah, we'd love to have people mess around with our stuff. And I think probably most artists, I would hope, take an open attitude like that. I suppose some say like, no, my thing's precious. It's in its final form. I don't want that messed with at all. I guess that's your, your prerogative. Yeah, sure. So shall we take a look at uh, maybe the, one of the sound packs, the tune packs? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so. What we've got, uh, let me load up the app here, Ninja Jam, and another artist on the label who's very popular is Bonobo. So here you come into the store, and uh, are we seeing this on screen? Cool. Um, where you can select your different packs. So uh, I've bought all the packs, so otherwise you would see, have any of them got price tags on? Yeah, so you could press this one, put in your uh, Apple ID and for 69p download this OCD Tiger Monkey track. But let's have a look at the Bonobo one. Eyes down. And here's some info about the, the track. So you can put in your credits and stuff there. And then we can play jam. So it loads the pack fairly quickly. And now the tune Eyes Down will play back. 
Now, if I don't do anything, it will play through. It's actually a slightly simplified version of the track because it's all done with loops and we've taken the track and kind of cut it down to the minimum amount of loops that we can use to recreate the track. And here we've got the, uh, the four stems. So if I just cut out the bass and the melody, we're just left with the drums. And along the top here, for each of these four tracks, we've got drums, bass, melody, and vocal. the effects in a minute. But let's just look at the drum track for instance. What we've got is eight different clips here. And I can cut between those instantaneously. So your human feel lets you jump in between them, but they're still always in time. So they're quite tight. Well, they're, they're running in sync with each other. But okay. as I say, I can chop as quickly as I like. It doesn't have to be quantized but each clip will come in in musically the right point. So that's a facility which doesn't, I don't think exists in any other bit of software. And I think it's quite fun to use it to sort of micro slice beats up on the fly and um, just use your ears to decide when to jump from one to the other. So let me do a quick demo of that. What I normally do is put in clips of different styles, maybe some half-speed ones. I, and uh, but, uh, yeah, these are mainly on the, a fairly sort of house speed. But right here, I put in like a swung half-speed reggae clip, and I really like the idea with electronic music that actually the different styles in fact, are very are unified. People seem to like to have walls between the music sometimes. And I think part of the point of the app is to break that down and show that really in electronic music, differences in styles are not that great. So you use the same breaks, the same sounds for making jungle as you use for making hip hop. They're just sped up. It's more a question of the BPM. Mm. Um, and we all use the same kind of instrument set, your hardware synths, your Moogs, your Ableton, your Logic. A lot of the same tools are used by producers worldwide. And um, it's just which direction you can take it in. So by putting a reggae beat in here, I've taken what is a, a sort of garage house track and turned it into a reggae track. And if I bring in the vocals, I've just got, a, these are what I call DJ effects, crush, and let me just try them out on the, the drums. These are just sort of on-off uh, effects. Delay, nice reverb. So I'm gonna stick some delay on the vocal track and I can just cut it in and out. I've put in like a King Tubby's reggae bass line as well. But yeah, it's, having the four different channels like this enables you to mix and match styles. So you can have some drums from reggae, a techno bass line, a house piano, and um, just go across the tracks. So not everything in the tune pack is from the original. That's right, exactly. So generally what we do is the first, uh, the first four clips in each channel will be derived from the original tune and then the subsequent later four clips are what we call the remix clips and that it's a lot of fun making up these remix clips so that they work with the track and they'll work with each other and we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, yeah, so it's a mixture of the original material and extra stuff which we make. A um, couple more facilities. Uh, you can pitch everything down instantly like that. Or indeed, speed it up. Just reset by double tapping. Um, and yeah, we'll look at some of the effects 
Uh, we'll have a quick look now, actually, so then later when we do the jam, you can see what I'm talking about. So apart from this screen here, where you can cut between the clips, there's also a different mode called drill mode, and this gives you access to the actual waveform of whatever clip's playing at the time. So I'm going to cut out the other channels, just leave the drums so you can hear what happens with the, uh, the drill mode here. So the waveform is displayed and by just, you can dive in and use your fingers to actually manipulate the sound directly by touching the waveform, which is quite nice. And that's looping those on 16th, but you can also use two fingers loop a, a shorter section and you can also reverse it as well. So these are all just different modes of directly interacting with the sound. Yeah, and it all remains in sync as well. It all remains in sync, so it always, always jumps back to where you were. So that's um, called the play matrix and that's got these two modes, the clip mode and the drill mode. You can even have uh, some clips in drill and some in uh, clip play so that you can do your swapping around. So quite a lot of flexibility yeah, there. Yeah. Let's have another look at uh, have a look at this page called the Stabs page, and this has got nine one-shot samples. The other samples are all loops, and these one shots are triggered from here, a bit like an MPC. Which is quite fun, but even more fun when combined with this, which is a simple pitch bend. So that's the Stabs page, DJ effects we looked at before. That's a, a sort of womp filter we call that, so it kind of twelfth, turns anything into dubstep. And um, like I was saying, it's nice to put some delay and reverb on and then cut the vocal in and out. And this page is also an effects page, but a different one, different style. It's like a chaos pad, but you've got two fingers to control four or more parameters at the same time. So it's, this is like a multi-effects preset. This is controlling a mixture of distortion and delay. And I can really crush that right out. And these effects are only applied to the channels that they're selected for. So here, for instance, if I turn off the uh, effects on the bass, then it's just affecting the drums track. And this is filter and, uh, yeah, combined filter distortion and delay and reverb. I think if I press this, it's gonna, I don't want to mess up the camera shot, but um, basically showing you that you can use tilt to control it as well. And that's quite nice because you can then go out of this page but leave the till on and still be doing other stuff. So there's more modes of interaction. Another quite nice thing I've mentioned is on the iPad, two people or more can jam at the same time because there's enough different things you can do for, you know, to use and utilize as many fingers as there are available. Um, I didn't mention, along the bottom we've got like a little transport here and this is set up to jump between different cues different sections of the song which are pre-programmed in. Let's have a look at the Cold Cutter, the final page. And this, uh, again, the Cold Cutter will work only on these channels which are selected. Let's um, take it off the melody and the drums and just have it on the vocals. These, these are chopping up the clip and then putting it back together in various ways. Maybe probably better on the drums, let's try that. You can there, hear it's producing some sort of beat shuffle variations in the drums which get more extreme on these different presets. But even more fun are these uh, shuriken cymbals here which 
apply sometimes unpredictable glitch effects to it. You never know, there's some randomness in there, so you never know quite what you're going to do. So you have to kind of drive along on top and then drop out. So there's six different ones, that just reverses everything. Those are 16. It's like a three, four thing, and these two more crazy ones. Okay, so yeah, that's the basic functionality. You can also record whatever you're doing. And when you're finished, hit record, and then you get the option to share it to SoundCloud, uh, and you can link it into your Facebook, Twitter, etc. so all your mates can hear your jam. That you yeah, play. cool. So that's the basic Ninja Jam functionality. And uh, yeah, we'll return to that later, but that's giving a, a demo with the Bonobo pack to, to show you what can be done. Yeah, it sounds, it, it's, it sounds like it looks like a lot of fun as well. That's, the, that's like you mentioned earlier, the word play is used a lot, and that's really what you were doing. It's like, despite the results being amazing, it's just having fun, trying things out. That's right, you know. that's right. And you know, I've been doing electronic music for 27 years now, and uh, I still like it. Yeah. And it's Didn't just is like. a lot of fun <laughs> messing around with sounds and grooves like yeah, that. Totally. So this is a new way to do it. So yeah. So how would you go about making a pack like that then? Okay, so making a pack basically consists of getting a bunch of samples and chopping them into the right format and then getting them into the app. But it, that process takes a little while. Mm. And uh, what we've done with the contributions from uh, some of you out there, is get some clips in. And I want to say thank you to Steve, Alex, Candy Flip, T-E-D-I, The Mama, and Levitate, and anyone else I might have forgotten who sent in some wicked clips. And what we've done is taken those and loaded them into Ableton and put in a few new clips myself to make a pack. And the, the concept with a pack is that everything works with everything else. That's why you're able to just chop between clips and as people have said, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing and it still sounds great. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, that's kind of the idea. Mm. Um, and that's a, a, a fair bit of work. And I, I, I find it a really nice creative challenge. It's sort of, sometimes I call it, it's the remix of the remix. Before, you know, Cold Cut uh, started getting into software, we would do conventional remixes like Seven Minutes of Madness, which you might know. And... Uh, I guess the idea that you could take a track completely away from what it was originally like and do something else with it was very stimulating. So, like I was saying before, by getting in a range of different types of material that work with the original elements, you can enable the user to explore different takes on that original track. And it's very good if you've got um, a bit of vocal to work with. If someone gives me an instrumental electronic track to remix, I might, I could just uh, make a completely different track. There was a story about Aphex Twin. He owed someone a remix and they came to pick it up and he hadn't done it, so he just gave him a random demo tape that I've he did send. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Richard has a great way of coming up with these stories. I don't know whether it actually happened, but uh, you know, <laughs> the attitude is spot on. And, but if you have a vocal there, then it's something that is identifiable yeah. about the track. So I'm not sure who uh, Erupt is, but one of you bods out there sent in some parts and initially sent them in combined with drums, vocals, and synths all mixed up. And we, my man Dor got onto SoundCloud, contacted him, and said, could you give us just the vocal parts, which he did. And I'm really happy to have got those because they give this pack that we've made a, a real identity, as you'll, you'll hear in a minute. Um, so I use Ableton as my main uh, door, is that mm -hmm. the phrase? Um, and people argue about you know, which is best, but uh, I find it does the job for me. And can we have the Ableton screen up there? So this is an Ableton song, and uh, this is like Blue Peter. This is one kids I made up before the show because um, 30 minutes isn't quite enough to do the full process. But basically what we've got is uh, four different channels of loops, 
corresponding to the four channels in the app. And usually they're drums, bass, something else, and something else. I've put the vocal ones in, in four. And the fifth channel is the one shots, the stabs, which we were looking at earlier. Uh, I've also just done a, a workshop uh, in Tel Aviv with uh, BPM and some of the participants there provided some samples for that as well, which are in the stab. So Mr. Cohen beats, thanks for those, nice one. Um, and really, yeah, it's just a question of getting clips from any source, loading them in, and then seeing if they work with each other and with the original elements. So one important thing I do is just have tuning. So we said this was going to be, we set the, B, set the BPM, 140, which doubles as 70, as you know, so we can mess around with that. That's middle C. And um, so it, I make sure that all my clips work with that as a basis. And I've been really getting into some iPad apps like the Sunriser Synth is a wicked bit of kit. Nave by Waldorf, it's great to see yeah. Waldorf coming back with a, a solid software synth. Um, and often I'll just plug in my iPad into the input of the laptop, set a beat going here, and then just mess about and record some stuff in. And that's how I made uh, this clip, which is called Nave Arc to edit this. I'll solo this so you can hear that. Uh, this was sent in by one of your students. Catch your breath arp, nice one. Astral keys. Now, that is on the naughty side, the samples go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A little bit. I'm sure your, uh, your jazzers out there will recognize that one. Um, you know, I kind of feel with this, that firstly, this is just a demo. This is not something that we're gonna sell. Yeah, yeah. So kind of anything goes. Um, but I do use the odd sample in there, and I feel, you know, this is just a new format, and we're trying to break it open. So if Ferris Saunders is listening, do get in touch. Um, Matrix Key Stem, this was another of your contributors. Let me bring in some of the other clips. Is the sound balance okay? Am I a bit loud here? To turn it down a little bit. And I can use uh, launch pads to conveniently chop between the samples. It's a bit like having the app in a hardware form. Um, that's another one of your guys' samples. Always put a simple fours kick in there, just to bring it back to the basics, people like that. Let's have a listen to another pad. Himalaya. These are the vocals. game noises there. It's always nice to have a bit of glitchy noise going on in the background, make things a bit more interesting. And um, yeah, so a lot of these samples, as I say, are sent in by your, your guys out there and really some nicely produced stuff as well. It's this Pong synth stem. Nice. Now, this is one of Jonathan's. This is a sort of crazy track that John pulls out of his seven-inch bag. <laughs> a little bit different to everything else, but uh, you know, you could surprise everyone on the dance floor yeah, by suddenly sure. steaming into that. And it's kind of a bassy one, but I find it worked well as a melodic stem by itself. So basically, each of these uh, clips 
uh, most of them were provided pretty well formatted actually, but when things aren't in the right format, or if I'm just going through my library, dragging in stuff, I'll tune it, I'll warp it so that it fits in with all the materials. And so there's a lot of swapping around between the clips, making sure that they all work with each other. But uh, yeah, it's a really enjoyable process. Yeah. So that's kind of how we do it. So at the end of this process, I've got a set of clips. I've got four lots of eight clips for each of the four main loop channels. And then I've got nine of the one shots. I think, okay, yep, I like this. I've been trying to adjust the volumes so they're all good with each other. And then I've got a little script which basically takes this Ableton and squirts out all these samples individually. And they have to be named right. This is a slightly um, clumsy way that it works at the moment. But uh, it does work. So they get named one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, two, one, two, 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 three, and that way the app can easily recognize them. Um, and then we get some artwork for the uh, point blank. We've used your logo, and that forms part of the pack as well. And we also make a sequence file which will control how the clips are played back. And that okay. can be a fair bit of work if you've got a song which, where you're actually trying to produce a, a definite structure for it. Basically, we sort of make it in Ableton and then by hand kind of copy that into a text format. Again, it's a, a sort of a simple way of doing it but, it, but it works. So that's the sequence file. The presets file contains information about the BPM, which, uh, which clips are in mono, which are in stereo. We try and put any clips that we can into mono because we want to save size, save uh, the, the, as much as we can on the size of the pack because some people are downloading over 3G mm. and it can take a while. The most packs work out, you can press them afterwards, be like 20, 30, 40 meg. I think now as things have speeded up generally, we can be a bit more generous because it is nice to have stereo samples. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of people will be jamming on headphones and uh, I've been getting more into stereo and you know, what you can do with it. You can use stereo to make a lot of space, I've realized. And if you just listen on speakers, you don't always realize that. There's a lot of people listening on headphones nowadays, and I think it's a good idea to, to cater for that. Yeah, and you can go into stereo effects as well. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Stereo effects sound, sound a lot better. The effects on here are fully stereo, so it takes advantage of that. So yeah, that's what happens. You squirt out a pack, and then you get the pack onto the app. Now, at the moment, there's a sort of slightly backdoor approach to that, which I will reveal, which is using, using a software called iExplorer which is a free bit of software that rather naughtily lets you look into your iDevice and mess around with the files. And you right. kind of slightly need to know what you're doing, but I was amazed when I could, saw how you could use this to see into the apps. And so you can, right now, kids, if you want to make a pack, you can use iExplorer to get that pack onto your iPhone. And we're going to make that, so I was saying, a simpler procedure in the future. Um, but for anyone who's super keen to do it, they can do that right now. Um, what we do is we make the, the pack and then we put it up online and we provide a link to that which people can then enter and get the pack via okay. the, the internet. So if I go back to the, uh, let's go back to the iPad for a second. And if I do a long hold on select a tune album pack it asks you for a ninja code. And I will reveal the source of the ninja code for this pack at the end. So that's how you do it, long hold on the, the store top. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what we're talking about. So I could dial up this pack and have a, yeah. a quick go Let's on hear that. It, yeah. yeah, The point blank ninja pack. The point pack. blank ninja tune pack coming up. There we go. Yeah, so thanks to all you guys who sent in clips. That was really wicked. Uh, yesterday, I was still struggling to make something that I thought was good, and I was pulling in all these old clips from all over the place. And then at the last minute, you slack lot, uh, a <laughs> bunch more clips arrived. Always so I was literally, like literally on the train coming down to London, uh, plugging these in. But as I listened to them, I thought, this is pretty good. The guys have come through. So uh, in the end, I think we've ended up with a really good pack. Let's see what you think.
<laughs> I was getting really caught up in that though, I forgot we were live. Um, well, that sounds great. And the, Thank it's you. amazing the difference the vocals make, isn't it, in general? Just like yeah, it that's really right. really ties things together. Let's really hear nicely. it for the vocalist out yeah. there. You know, most other instruments we can produce and simulate electronically now, but putting your voice out there is a really ballsy thing to do. Yeah, totally. You know? Uh, I'd, so, yeah, it, there's a reason why vocalists are, are respected and revered, yeah. actually. Yeah. And I think what, what's great about that is you don't get caught up in compression, EQ, filtering, arrangement. It's just like, right. just, does it sound good? Yeah. If not, now there's we, something else. If right, we, we were starting yeah. to talk about this before and it's like, I'm not an expert on getting a good sound and all these fine points. You know, fair play, if you can learn about that stuff and get it down, it's a fine art. And actually, the sonic nowadays is incredibly important. We've got Dave Taylor from Switch working on the new Colca album mm. in LA and I can tell you it is sounding and that guy is exploring yeah, new territories of sound. But it's not particularly my speciality. I'm more into bolting stuff together. And, you know, I hear something, a combination that I like. It's like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, but it, it, this, I think the app lets you have the best of both worlds. And um, thank you to my uh, audio apprentice, Anik Tharpa, who does a lot of work for us on making the, the packs sound really good. He's got pretty expert now about sweetening. So when we make the pack, I should have mentioned, you know, we get all the clips, output it from Ableton, do an alpha version of it, make sure we're happy with it, and then a process of optimization and sweetening takes place where Anik will get in and really try and get the maximum out of each clip, whilst making sure that they all work together as well so that it delivers the best sonic experience. Yeah, amazing. So we've got a whole bunch of questions. Um, I'll try and get through as many as possible. Um, let's have a look. Does it work on iPad 1? Comes from Chucklebox II00. No, no. sorry. Uh, not enough memory. In a word. Yeah. No. Actually, <laughs> actually, I wonder if we might. We're doing an enhancement that converts it to use 16 bit samples instead of 32 bit. Anyway, it's a bit technical, but basically at the moment, no, but keep it locked. We might still be able to do that. Okay, cool. Um, Ralph Stillin has asked, are you planning on making Ninja Jam available on Android? <laughs> this, is sure strictly, this is strictly the number one question. Uh, we would love to, but it's a very difficult ask. The two reasons are, firstly, we're just a small company and I've put a lot of my own sort of funds into doing this and we, developing is quite expensive. Even though we developed this with SEPA, who I should give a plug to, East London Arts Collective, wicked guys to work with who actually did all the coding and design for this. Um, but it, it, it's expensive and we haven't got the money right now. Having said that, I would really love to do it and I'm not uh, an Apple evangelist. I believe in diversity in culture. Um, but it's true that Apple and their devices are quite a bit ahead in terms of particularly audio. Mm. The Android audio is just not up to much. And if you look on our Facebook, the Ninja on Facebook page, it's a question that people ask. And there's some links that we keep posting of some technical discussions about why this just is a huge pain in the ass. Um, so Samsung is stepping up with some devices which can handle it. And it's... It's on the agenda, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. Having okay. said that, we'll just let off a little secret, which is I'm working on some other music apps, and they should work on Android and uh, iOS as well, and maybe even be able to work together. So that would be uh, a fine thing. Yeah. A um, bit of a, um, quite a long question, but Amit has asked, I think, 
what he's basically trying to say is um, don't use loops, use one, one shots only because the loop is the rhythm, someone else's rhythm that they've programmed. Um, what do you think about that? Is that something you adhere to as well? Are you happy to use full loops or would you say get the one shots and then program it yourself? I, I can't quite pass that question. I don't quite understand it. Uh, it may be that what he's saying is that playing stuff is more interesting than loops. Yeah. So taking a kick and a snare, for instance, and playing your own rhythm off that is more interesting than just playing a loop. And, you know, that's just a point of view. It's all good. I do like live playing, and we do quite a lot of jams at my studio, Space Lab, and we even play without a click. You know, it's right. been amazing to release oneself from the tyranny of the click <laughs> and just get really freaky with with timings and you know, let the drummer control the BPM and even change times and stuff. So um, I, th I think you know, Ninja Jam is a loop-based app. We all love loops. It's a big part of how electronic music works. Mm -hmm. But if you were to say, well, don't just have loops because it can be pretty boring, I would totally agree with that. Yeah. It, it, what I like about this is a combination of loops and live playing as well. So with the swapping between clips and also with the one shops, there's quite a lot of freedom for expression and even for making mistakes, which can be good. Yeah, sure. Um, let me just have a quick look. Um, so Chacklebox again has asked, does it have a sequencer or is it strictly a live tool in the sense that can you sequence what you're doing? No, you okay. can't. It's not a sequencer. It's not Ableton. Okay. You know, it's not a door. It's a live instrument. It, we, we could go down that route but I don't quite see how to put it, a sequencer into it. And you know, this can work on your iPhone. It's not just for iPad as well. We've managed to squeeze this onto a little interface. But when I want to do some sequencing, I don't use my iPhone or my iPad. I use my laptop because you need the extra screen yeah. estate. I don't think it's really designed for that. It's more of like a jamming tool and using the record facility, you know, you can use it to come up with sections and then load those into your station and and enhance them from there. So, not a sequencer. No. Okay, cool. So, we're just about out of time there, I think. Um, maybe, do you want to give the information on how they can get that pack with the code? Yes, well, actually, what I'm going to do is, rather naughtily, I'm going to ask that you visit the Facebook page for Ninja Jam, which is facebook.com slash Ninja Jam, and we will post the code for that there. Uh, in the next couple of minutes. So check that out. And if you want to give us a like on that page, that's always handy. Um, yeah, we're kind of doing this for love, really, as much as anything. We're not making any money on it. I've got a lot of plans for this software. I think we could still take it further. And my ambition is to make the ultimate audio jamming app and, uh, you know, give it away. I'm not really interested in making money. I'm just interested in pushing it forward. So any support you can give us with that is much appreciated. Cool. Perfect. So yeah, thanks to Matt for coming in and thanks to everyone for watching as usual. Um, do keep an eye on our Facebook page, our Google Plus and our Twitter and YouTube for all that good stuff. We've got plenty of tutorials coming next week and I will be back next Friday with another FFL. Thanks.